Welcome, dudes. I am going to start watching these. This is... We'll see how far I make it. If I am intrigued or like, come on, dude, kind of thing. We'll see. I, I mean, so far I'm, a, I'm somewhat intrigued. I don't want to be too close-minded. <clears throat> I'm somewhat intrigued. I acknowledge the potential is there that someone might have created something useful uh, technologically that maybe can access energy that is wasted and make it more, just make things more useful in that way. It seems like that's what it's doing it's, since it's more like coupled to an internal combustion engine to capture its heat, I think convert it into useful energy, not just exhaust the heat by entropy to really make it more efficient. Uh, let's see what he has to say, though. I've only one way to actually see. He has the lightning. I noticed the lightning was like my ancient Torka video. Even though it doesn't have all the test the the Tesla stuff, it's kinda like, dude, it's Tesla. Maybe Tesla too. Hello, I'm Malcolm Bendel. I'm here to give you a full Pardon presentation. Me, that was rude. That was just rude. I'm fucking critiquing critiquing like people's the only reason I critique it is because I feel like people tend to use Nikola Tesla's fame and like name and his like just the just throwing Tesla uh, blah blah I'm doing research and I also agree with Tesla like that's all it takes to get people interested so a lot of people do that approach and it's not sound because like I mean I see what you guys are doing. That's what it is. <laughs> of the overall uh, schematics and uh, maybe throw some headphones on so that it's more. Sound through headphones. I know how cool I look with these headphones on. So I'm gonna just go ahead and blow your minds with my coolness. You don't have to, you know, just don't look directly at it. Just, I just, for forewarning, look more towards the video. So we'll watch the video now. Thunderstorm generator and the uh, plasmoid driven technologies ranging from uh, jet engines to diesel engines, petrol engines, gas engines. Uh, I've been working on this uh, project and gathering this information. I'm just going to speed it up to the uh, like conversational points and get to technicals and slow down. Well, no, I certainly won't play it all Globally, like that. And that's uh, meant that I've had to travel for 20 years out of Australia to. Uh, find the sources of the information anywhere from the, uh, the deserts of Egypt to the libraries uh, throughout Europe and uh, in America and also uh, even the Vatican Library uh, going back uh, as far as I can in history so I can go forward as far as we can in the future with this uh, old technology which was lost and the basis of it which has also been lost which is the, uh, the sacred geometry and that's why uh, we're focusing on geometry because unfortunately I think that's uh, the part that's difficult for people because it's you know, crystal form and the relationship to elements and their expression as monad, dyad, triad, tetrad is not well known by the public. And although it's, it's universally ubiquitous in the sense that it relates to uh, the planets, then the minerals and the elements on the planet. So as above, so below. So uh, they've taken people to a transition from uh, partial knowledge that hasn't been taught. So it's very hard to explain a technology where from the schooling system uh, in the West, uh, not so much in the East because you have the Tibetan uh, schooling and you also have the schooling of the Sanskrit text, specifically India, which really relates to the, uh, the history, uh, the long history and deep history that's not, that's pretty much discarded. It's sort of a colonial sort of idea of, you know, when uh, 
everyone was being invaded and conquered at the peak of uh, you know, the British Empire and the, uh, the Spanish Empire and the uh, Dutch Empire and you know, the German Empire. So all these empires, the Ottoman Empire, these all these uh, uh, sort of disrupted history. You know, it just occurred to me because of copyright things, I'm going to post these unlisted except for this video. This video is going to link to the play unlisted playlist as well. Maybe pl maybe just a listed playlist. I have an unlisted Alex Jones defamation trial playlist that I link in my first video <clears throat> in that playlist. Day one, part one. And... Um, I was thinking doing the same, but it's less controversial and more so I need the videos to not get copyright struck and taken down for those reasons because I'm really, like, I'm trying to provide my interpretation of this as, like, a reaction, fair use, like, it's legitimate. According to what we have agreed to do, this is allowed but like when i actually do it copyright like if someone wants to all they need to do is complain the system is designed that if you complain then you matter if you like try not to complain then your opinion must be that you're like in accord with the complaints like that's the way we function it's fucking ridiculous youtube at, at all and, and we lost a lot of things in that disruption that are you know not that we don't have a base now to really go back and understand so starting with sacred geometry and working all the way from sacred geometry and you have to take that sacred geometry as being a scientific uh, fact rather than a sort of a an ancient myth so uh, and of course uh, you know point out that in the 18th century, it was a fact that Troy was a myth because no one had found it. So obviously it didn't exist. But then, unfortunately, for those that said it didn't exist, uh, you know, these pesky little things have a, uh, they have a turning up. So, uh, and the same, I'm sure, will happen with the matters as it does with everything else. That the strange uh, fertility of the human species. What about Dwarka, man? You're talking about his Sanskrit and the Hindu texts, but then Atlantis. It's like the, the two don't compare, guys. <laughs> Everyone's so focused on Atlantis. Like one of them is barely talked about; the other is just this like documented record of Dwarka. It just doesn't compare. Like we should at least acknowledge that alternative place on earth also exists and is also relevant to also be a place that like it's just standard operating procedure it reminds me of the tesla thing where he's saying atlantis because that's like the fad du jour not because it's the most important because dwarka is way more important Bad to jour though. Everyone's talking about Atlantis, so we gotta talk about Atlantis, and you can't talk about Atlantis outside of the agreed upon why we're talking about Atlantis Azores Ricotte structure. We're not talking about Atlantis for like actually finding it. We prefer to just like as a collective enjoy. It's just like it, it's kinda like really enjoying the meal like taking every bite like really enjoying a meal versus just eating it like we're just gonna focus on this little bite right here and not i don't want any other food i'm perfectly fine with this plate of poo okay because that's pretty much what it is <laughs> Sorry guys, <laughs> not an offense. <laughs> Just when something's false, it's kind of shitty in some relative manner. I guess that could be said to me on oh, as above, so below. Good point. Disregard and, and completely uh, minimalize the knowledge of our ancestors is very naive and also very insulting to the ancestors and very insulting to the people that have the same uh, because, you know, they had the same mental acuity that... I really don't think that they, like, explain...
the sacred geometry i'm pretty sure has developed recently i don't know the history of it in terms of like i don't obviously like understanding of it was present in the past but i don't think it was like elaborated on in sanskrit in a way where it's like developed fundamentally from it it's more like we see the sacred geometry like the flower of life depicted globally in places and recognize that they recognized sacred geometry but i'm not sure that they actually explain it like that i'll let him speak though pardon me similar um, uh, within the cultures very similar blueprints which means there was a central government and there was a central body of knowledge that that government was drawing upon. and that knowledge throughout history comes and goes like the tide yep and so uh, and so you know and civilizations rise and fall on you know whether the I mean, he's he's definitely aware of hermetic principles and applying them and speaking them in 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 applicable ways not just like like knowledge like that knowledge functions like a tide is a deep understanding i would say so it shows he's thought about things of that nature and appreciated that that occurs which is a good sign that he's probably has something to add that's not just like straight up scam And maybe something very good to add that's not scam. I don't know. I don't want to, again, be too close-minded. I, I mean, obviously, it's a highly unlikely, but so is the discovery of the theory of everything. And I just constantly am met with, like, naysaying because of sheer probability of, the, of it all. Like, oh, you... Like, I, I say that I did something. I am, like these things are happening and people are like no it's not that's not that's not true because i don't understand what you're saying and odds odds are and people just play the odds odds are you didn't come up with new technology so i will be an asshole fuck you dude how dare you how dare you take my time and attention with this scam i'm going to i'm going to critique what did you see that that facial expression right there. I saw it. I saw it. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, Malcolm. <laughs> That's just what happens. Though. So it's possible that... And I mean, I certainly don't know everything. And just because I discovered the theory of everything doesn't mean that I subsequently applied that knowledge to things that like if he's building it off of sacred geometry it almost is like it's almost like just skipping the middle step of giving a shit about people's opinions in terms of like scientifically arriving there and just being like no it's there and just kind of starting there without re like yes sacred geometry like you said to like believe it and then like start much more starting there without actually like working there through the physics so he probably has a lot of like relativity involved uh maybe quantum mechanics i don't know if he actually goes that into modern physics or almost it looks it looked like he almost just like developed his own language if you will which is kind of like appropriate when a new novel thing happens that it won't have the same presentation path of other things to a point where like it requires being like it's literally like a new language i've been watching um xiao xiao ma xiao ma this dude is incredible shout out to xiao ma there he is 
dude's incredible. He learns the language in like three weeks and then goes and speaks it. Like all sorts of languages. At this point, I'm mean, just based on how many videos he has with different languages. He must be in the teen twenties. Must be acquainted with many languages. But it made me think, though, like there, there, like if I focus on sp literal languages, like this is a language too and it's so i kind of have been learning languages like physics geology things that are maybe not perceived the same and just like writing a language probably but just a just a fun thought i had like when we when we um self educate our when we educate ourselves and just learn on our own then we're basically learning languages. It doesn't even need to be literally termed a language for it to be a language. It's still a language. So that's kind of cool. And that makes me feel better about my life where I didn't learn so many languages. Like, I just really speak English. I can kind of speak some French. But that's pretty much it. But then I got all these other languages. Cool. Okay, pardon me. I really am interrupting too much. Let's go back a little. Okay, so that's... That's actually a false interpretation that he's referencing, but I won't get into it. It's just, it's just not how the magnetic anomaly is formed. In this presentation, what I've done to get this information is to, to look at, try to go back to the very base of knowledge, and that is from the very... Um, See all my other underground science videos and etc. Earth's undercurrents to see why I would say that. Observations of things that are empiric. That is, you can't argue over the fact that the moon is there because it reminds you it's there in every full moon. So, and basically, you can't uh, then dismiss the fact that the sun's there. So, you know, and the distances between the sun and the moon remain the same. You know, although the over time, the uh, they have the uh, their variations, but fundamentally, the portions, the portions, the ratios of those numbers are consistent and uh, with the planetary sizes, as they are consistent, and this is the main element that I found in the tour around the world, you go to different continents, uh, and you uh, acknowledge the work of there of uh, Graham Hancock, and just as an observer, you can observe that these, these uh, when you measure them and you look at the structures, that there has to be some communication between these uh, you know, communities, whereas uh, very much going back to the colonial um, sort of view is that uh, you know, when all these uh, invasions happened, uh, they were very destructive because they completely dismissed uh, or deliberately dismissed or wanted to negate any possibility that there was a, uh, you know, especially in South America, that there was any civilization there, so they sort of wiped out the record. And that had a lot to do with politics as well, because people were claiming nations on the basis that they were uninhabited, you know, uh, so, and therefore they could legally just come and take the nation. Sounds like Israel. So, um, that, uh, anyway, so we'll go through the, uh, uh, that history throughout the, uh, and show the evidence of that throughout the uh, presentation. So basically, uh, it's just the That's interesting. We can look at Israel and see a modern day example of people claiming a territory that's inhabited as their own. The Strike Foundation uh, is the entity in which we're using to uh, um, uh, bring forth the technology, and that has a mechanism of uh, uh, lodging the IP at the IP bank. And so, uh, and the Strike Foundation Earth is where people can follow up on this presentation and go to other resources besides this um, uh, basically slide presentation, a uh, PowerPoint presentation with the embedded videos. So, and of course, multi-CR, atomic reconstruction technology, just to explain that to everyone, it's about the ancient uh, numbers that are uh, basically uh, locked into, for example, you know, the pyramid and locked into all these ancient structures that uh, Graham Hancock's identified and then, uh, you 
know, Randall Carlson has come on top of that and sort of they said, okay, <coughs> look at the numbers, look at the size of these things, look at the height. I mean, I, I know it's kind of annoying. He hasn't really not annoying it's just kind of like are you going to present whatever it is but he certainly needs to like build in and it's fair to have a kind of like a intro section that's less rigorous and more just talking about the general basis for why it's all the case I, ho I just hope that's not just like all that we ever get to hear. <laughs> Look at the, uh, you know, the relationship uh, you know, in all these different uh, countries uh, to, the to the architecture. You know, so, so basically, the Mopsy Arc goes back to the fact that the uh, Solomon's Mopsy 2 is the last known, uh, that I found, the last known plasma generator consciously used in history to generate uh, and store charge using the MSAT plasmoids, which are an atomic battery through their geometry, and that's why geometry is so important. And that's why it's very naive to dismiss sacred geometry as being, you know, some uh, hocus pocus in the park. No one's really dismissing sacred geometry just by dismissing his research, though. It's kind of like... Just because I dismiss plate tectonics doesn't mean I dismiss geology as a field of study. Like one is an interpretation, one is a field of study. So like sacred geometry is really a field of study, and then what he's presenting is really in his interpretation of that field of study, which maybe is valid, it may be like very much like zeroing in on a like description that people collectively would agree with and regurgitate almost verbatim because it's so perfected but like not necessarily just because we're talking about sacred geometry and acknowledging its importance doesn't mean we're understanding it yet and we'll see it's certainly like a moving scale from zero to infinity kind of thing like to total unawareness of the concept to literal mastery beyond comprehension of like an infinite level that like no one's there everyone's somewhere in the middle if they're not at the beginning so like <laughs> there's just too many variables we'll see we'll see pardon me for saying no one maybe malcolm's there This is my problem with what's going on here. They want to talk about sacred geometry. I show them this fucking mountain. I s all you need to do is literally behold it and know of sacred geometry and be like, there's something important here. So, like, people talk about sacred geometry who don't even, like, look at this mountain and immediately become utterly fascinated by it. Aren't that aware of sacred geometry, I'd say. It doesn't, it just can't, it's, like, it doesn't compute. Like, it's, it's, on a, it's happening on a grand scale right the fuck in front of our eyes. And here I show you, it doesn't, like, lead to discussion. It leads to me being, like marginalized, disregarded, belittled, and uh, left to die, you fucking clowns, pardon me, <laughs> sorry a little bit, you know, pissed off because my circumstances suck, I'm literally left to fucking die by people who I show my research to, and then, like, Randall, 
pardon me to name names. Literally, they don't care about this mountain. You guys don't care about this mountain. There's like some control going on because I'm pretty sure people within the group of people here acknowledge this mountain to be interesting enough to be like, the fuck? <laughs> but they, uh, you know, we, we got to follow the leader. They can't just fucking, it would be too much to be like, Dude, that mountain is fucking incredible. What are we talking about? Not talking about. We're not going to talk about this mountain. Oh, we're not going to talk. I see how it is. I see. <laughs> we Yeah, we're going to talk about the same thing we talked about over and over and over. Ad nauseum. That's better approach. I actually recently heard that we didn't really lose as much as we, as it said, because someone looted it, and there was really not, it was more just like a story that they told to hide that they stole it. I don't know why the person was suggesting these things, but like, certainly I could, I could see that as a thing that happened. Maybe they took very important books, books first and things are just not like, it's hard to say what was in there after the fact. It's a book, you know, probably doesn't say like library of Alexandria with a little checkout card. I needed to answer that. It was a doctor's office, but I'll call him back. <sighs> Left to die. It's fucking real hard truth, dudes. That's how we are. That's how fucked we are as a people. Where if we disagree with one another, left to die. <laughs> Good luck. Oh, did you need resources in this world because you're a living being? <laughs> Too bad. You better fucking jump through the hoops that I think you should be jumping through. You ain't sucking my D enough. I said I'm awesome. Instead of using an internal combustion engine as a power source to drive you and 
to create the thrust, you would use a plasmoid-based uh, power source, not an, an internal combustion engine-based plasmoid. But in the meantime, we can transition smoothly from the internal combustion engine to uh, the uh, plasmoid-based uh, engine simply because we can retrofit the internal combustion engine uh, so that it the, uh, could be more efficient by putting the retrofit of the plasmoid uh, system, the MSAT plasmoid system, onto that, which means that at the same time, you're not collapsing the oil industry nor the automotive industry because the sensible, smart thing is that you use the plasmoid. That's just... Carry on. protein is worth more than the petrol. So that gives the oil industry a smooth transition, the society a smooth transition, and that's what we're wanting to do because it is a disruptive technology if it's uh, not implemented with a great degree of care and forethought as to what those changes, what impact those changes will have. So anyway, so we go through uh, here um, and uh, to the last section, we uh, uh, have some diagrams talking about the relationship between ether and matter and then we go on further to uh, uh, for the ultimate uh, application. Shiva lingam, ether matter. That's very interesting. These two sections. I'm intrigued to see what he has to say. Plasmoids is in space uh, exploration because it produces opportunity to have a literally an infinite source of energy, which is matter, available to you, and you can travel. Uh, yeah, it, 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 exceeding the speed of light, because the speed of light is not constant, therefore our technology alters the speed of light, therefore the precession of time, and uh, that's what you'd call in uh, uh, as a, uh, a warp drive, where you're warping space-time. So basically that's the ultimate, but let's just start from taking existing technologies, and this is an introduction to how we're going to transition existing technologies to the space mode base, <sighs> which is an introduction to the new industrial revolution. So anyway, we'll move on to the next slide now. So, as uh, famous Mr. Albert Einstein said, there's enough energy in a glass of water to boil all the oceans of the world. And that statement is, uh, he's not alone in that statement, but it does, uh, you know, it's a reason for everyone in the world to pause on that statement. Because if that statement's correct, uh, and uh, you know, we can rely on uh, a lot of the uh, basic fundamentals behind that statement, but also on the gentleman itself, then one has to figure that how do you unlock that energy? Because it's an enormous amount of energy. You know, and uh, I think uh, Keeley had similar statements. Many people, Tesla had similar statements about the power of water. So this technology uh, uh, actually uh, uses the power of water in a sensible way, which is uh, clean, uh, without nuclear byproducts, and uh, can be implemented globally. So we'll just, uh, you'll see the purple uh, here, which you'll see on the next slide, which comes to the key to the technology. So you see here a purple light, and that purple light represents uh, about 7,000 every second imploding bubbles caused by uh, ultrasonics. So basically, sometimes it's done in a sphere or sometimes in a tube, Basically, you apply ultrasonic, so you have a collision point, which basically creates heat. That heat creates bubbles. Those bubbles then collapse. And when they collapse, uh, 7,000 a second, then it produces this UV light. Now, the UV, uh, the UV light indicates a um, you know, a atomic-based uh, reaction. There's a lot of energy coming out of that center. And embedded in this uh, video, uh, so it's embedded in this PowerPoint presentation of a video which demonstrates the, uh, uh, the forces that are involved uh, in an explanation of them. So anyway, that's called the star in the jar, and I recommend people go and have a look at that because there's many people around the same experiment. It's not, it's a repeatable experiment that's well acknowledged. Now, this is curious because the first star in the jar appearance was in 1934. So, you know, almost 100 years ago, and yet this is the first time that that observed phenomenon has been used in a commercial application, to my knowledge. So, so uh, we'll go to the next slide. Uh, basically, this gives a, uh, an understanding of what can be achieved using 
those some floating bubbles which actually form uh, <coughs> is very important I know I sound like a fucking maniac to people who don't know what I'm talking about is very important to figure out how atoms actually work For instance, literally, a current in creating mounds that are then like densely packed that are neutrons and then where the current basically eddies, is able to eddy. Pretty, I know this is, looks kind of ridiculous on, on an island, but for people who don't know what I'm talking about. But I really do believe this island represents a legitimate, like, good example of, and other islands having others, of a lithium-7. <clears throat> so, like, basically how this is, is there's a container that has an inlet. If there's one inlet, and it's a container, then it's just a proteum with just a proton because it's just a container with a space for a current to flow into and out of. But then when there's a neutron, a mound forms, basically, I didn't draw this well, I should have drawn this dot here within the container, <clears throat> but I just kind of kept it like more like these. But then uh, that current builds a mound that then behaves as a neutron and then basically begins to shape the boundaries as well so the current gets kind of moved over so then it starts to produce another mound over here tritium and then if it goes through like it can continue through and carve out the chamber side over here and creating an outlet and if it does that then it and has a mound to one side of the chamber because it still has a chamber even though I didn't draw the chamber in any of these it's still in like a chamber setting and then flows through the chamber though and so like this matters this is relevant to actually understanding what the fuck we're talking about I don't know what, like the full scope of what's happening here. All I can say is it is not an accident that the number of neutrons that forms a stable looking structure like this one, in this case it repeats because it's such a low number of neutrons, but really like this one repeats with this number of neutrons. I didn't do this on purpose it just is how it happens like what i mean is like silicon silicon has 16 neutrons phosphorus 16 sulfur 16 these are all stable isotopes so like this aspect is utterly not present in what he's talking about and it's very important to actually understanding what is happening. I'm not saying that I figured everything out about it. I just know that like without incorporating it into how we view atoms, it's just very difficult to really conceptualize and visualize what these things really are. And therefore, like, without approximation, basically, but with, like, very fine-tuned accuracy to a degree where it's, like, indistinguishable from exact, like, actually modeling what's going on down on this scale. Uh, it's really one, one, one. Uh, uh, in carbon, is six photons. 
six neutrons and six electrons. The nitrogen, which is 80% of our air, which is part of our technology, because you can travel through the air, and if you can split one of the, the, uh, the strongest bonds uh, in chemistry, is the bond between N2, the nitrogen, and it's combined. And the same with O2, the uh, combination. So, so if you can split that combination, you can produce ammonia, which can be used in the same way as uh, petrol. So, uh, and in my notes in section two, uh, you will see a full uh, uh, scientific explanation of that phenomenon. So we can actually use the nitrogen from the atmosphere to power your car. So, and then you have oxygen, which is uh, eight protons, eight neutrons, and eight electrons. So these are the key components. You know, nitrogen is, uh, as I said, you know, about 79% of the atmosphere. Uh, oxygen is about 20%. So, and uh, carbon in the form of, um, you know, carbon, dioxide and carbon monoxide and only a very small percentage of the gases in the atmosphere. Now the next slide will show you how we manipulate that and use that by, and by uh, through the facilitation of <coughs> the uh, MEMSAT plasmoid to be both an atomic battery but also as a catalyst. So they can uh, enable reactions that uh, normally would be at not higher pressures and temperatures at a lot lower pressures and temperatures. That's what a catalyst does. And so, so basically, did he just say plasmoids behave as a catalyst? I think he did. I just want to make sure it's not. Associated and then reformed as oxygen, therefore eliminating the byproducts, not through any mechanism that is currently used in our society. So, oxygen, which is your 888, then is, can be uh, created by adding uh, protons and electrons which have been disassociated, that is, they're taken back to their, their uh, before frequency. So, there's no frequency added, so they're Basically, they just go back to pure energy, which is the ether, which is direct DC, direct current. So, so basically, uh, through this uh, zero-point plane that, for example, the exhaust gases go through, which are basically carbon-based, like uh, carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide, so which are you know, the cause of concern at the moment. So how do you get rid of that? Well, you simply disassociate your hydrogen into its base form of energy, uh, and then you add that in proportion to take your carbon, which is 666, to your oxygen, which is 888. So, uh, and in uh, that process, uh, what effectively you've done is, with your exhaust gases, you've taken a stream of toxic products, which are positively charged, and you've actually reformed them into uh, oxygen and uh, got rid of your hydrocarbons, which are also part of the carbon equation, uh, as well as your carbon dioxide and monoxide. So you've got rid of those elements, and then those elements are therefore... Uh... This thing he just said here, if he could do this legitimately, he could just make a gold freely. I mean, it's basically creating new elements by just adding hydrogen in a freed form and then because the plasmoid is present it then it 
actually enables them to be coupled rather than them being like unable to happen like the concept that we can't create like different atoms out of certain atoms that doesn't really make sense it's more like we're just not able to presently rather than like it's intrinsically and inherently an impossibility it's kind of like a, the just the assumption of human nature oh we can't we can't we th we thought about it for like a while dude what are you doing proposing such things we thought about it we already figured out we can't do it So, I mean, I'm not saying that he can't do that. This doesn't happen in the process. But it, like, to just casually step over, it's kind of interesting. Carbon to oxygen, boom, boom. It does it, like, he doesn't even acknowledge that it's kind of, like, completely counter to traditional thoughts, if you will, consensus. I mean, he's got the right objectives, I would say. Whether or not he achieves the goal <clears throat> doesn't really necessarily matter so much. I mean, obviously it would be optimal if he literally did, but so basically, just that he's like t got a target in mind that certainly like an understanding that the shit we have right now just ain't gonna cut it. We need something new. Like, it's not some question of, ah, oh, ba the batteries are not good enough yet. The fuel cells are not good enough yet. No, 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 no. We need new technology, dudes. Uh, that's that. We'll go to the next slide. Which is, uh, uh, Although, okay. Job chapter 38. It's too limited. You can't just give me 30 something. Like. Let's at least start here. Can you? Who's talking? Who's talking? What's up? Then the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm. He said, Who is this that obscures my plans with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you understand. Who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? On what were its footings set? Or who laid its cornerstone while the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy? Who shut up the sea behind doors when it burst forth from the womb, when I made the clouds its garment and wrapped it in thick darkness, when I fixed its limits 
for it. It sounds like straight up Earth expansion. <clears throat> when I fixed its li when I fixed limits for it and set its doors and bars in place. When I said, this far you may come and no further, here is where your proud waves halt. So cool. Have you ever given orders to the morning or shown the dawn its place that it might take the earth by the edges and shake the wicked out of it? The earth takes shape like clay under a seal. Its features stand out like those of a garment. The wicked are denied their light and their up upraised arm is broken. Have you journeyed to the springs of the sea or walked in the recesses of the deep? Have the gates of death been shown to you? Have you seen the gates of the deepest darkness? Have you comprehended the vast expanses of the earth? Tell me if you know all this. What is the way to the abode of light and where does darkness reside? Can you take them to their places? Do you know the paths to their dwellings? Surely you know, for you were already born. You have lived so many years. Have you entered the storehouses of the snow, or seen the storehouses of the hail, which I reserve for times of trouble, for days of war and battle? What is the way to the place where the lightning is dispersed, or the place where the east winds are scattered over the earth? Who cuts a channel for the torrents of rain, and a path for the thunderstorm, to water a land where no one lives, an uninhabited desert, to satisfy a desolate wasteland and make it sprout with grass? Does the rain have a father? Who fathers the drops of dew? From whose womb comes the ice? Who gives birth to the frost from the heavens when the waters become hard as stone, when the surface of the deep is frozen? Can you bind the chains of the Pleiades? Can you loosen Orion's belt? Can you bring forth the constellations in their seasons or lead out the bear with its cubs? Do you know the laws of the heavens? Can you set up God's dominion over the earth? Can you raise your voice to the clouds and cover yourself with a flood of water? Do you send the lightning bolts on their way? Do they report to you, here we are, who gives the ibis wisdom, or gives the rooster understanding? Ibis? Ibis. Who has the wisdom to count the clouds, who can tip over the water jars of the heavens when the dust becomes hard and the clouds of clots, clods? clouds of earth stick together do you hunt the prey of the, for the lioness and satisfy the hunger of the lions when they crouch in their dens or lie in wait in a thicket who provides food for the raven when it's young cry out to god and wander about for lack of food Sounds like that's some putting someone in their place kind of statement. Like, look, look, bruh, I am the Lord, thy God. <laughs> that's what that sounds like. So, anyway. Out of context. <laughs> Just flow of subtle particles, really. 
it's like opening a crack and then widening it. We don't really see the crack opening across a small enough fractal dimension where then it, but it does. And then like it opens in the, the, the pathway through exists. And then the lightning like energetically conduit like a stream of water, just lightning flows through as well as probably exchanges in both directions. Of subtle and gross particles, if you will. Subtle, it's very small and abundant in number and very large and less abundant. Strike Foundation makes me think of like the Striker and X Men, I think. Dude who like just tortures Wolverine and experiments on him. <laughs> like, come on, man! You gotta, you gotta pick a better name than Strike. It's like, it's like the uh, Chinese company. What did they call it? It's, they literally called their uh, AI-controlled population monitoring program Skynet. Like, dudes. <laughs> pardon me, pardon me, sir. I don't want to hate on the strike name. It just sounds very... It's more like a aggressive, masculine, maybe, of a term. Or maybe it's just a miss. With... Sorry, dude. <laughs> Had to consider the baseball angle. But that's only one strike, bro. Only one strike. I don't know. I'm rude. I know. Part of me. He's probably. If he ever sees this, uh, my bad, dude. I obviously don't know any of the subsequent videos yet, so. I mean, he has. He has thought about and considered and entertained good thoughts cleaning up radiation from people's bodies there's probably ways to like heal ourselves through these not these but like these types of uh thought patterns like maybe he hasn't truly arrived at it but in order to even arrive at it requires like to consider it
and even if he doesn't, like, someone else can hear of it, that concept, like, oh, yeah, we maybe we could do something like that, and then, like, actually figure it out, so it's, like, it's useful, even if we're not, like, individually doing it, again, I don't know if we're doing it, Did not think that much about this part. Like, if it's genuine, like, if if this shit is legit, he does not need to fucking jump through the hoops of the system. He just needs to be like, dudes, this way now. <laughs> and so that's the model, and these, at the moment, uh, uh, the most pressing issue which we focus on is chimneys, as well as the cars. And like, and actually give it away as much as we can. Not really this shit. This shit's like does not compute with the what I was saying. Like, has thought about these types of potentials, and that shows that like he's thinking about it. But this side, I, mean, I just don't. I, fucking companies, man. Fucking companies. It's like on Twitter they get verification for being a member of a company. I'm like, dude, but if you think about it, you're rewarding people for choosing to be part of something smaller than society itself and promoting that way of life. Like, oh, you're part of society. So is everyone else. You're part of... U.S. government, you get all doopity doop. We'll put it to the gray one. Show your government official. <laughs> Shows you think that we're less than a society and we're like a conglomeration of disconnected groups that should behave as such since you support the system that does it as a U.S. government official. <laughs> Like, it doesn't actually... It is utterly backwards. And also, chimneys, uh, those that leave toxic gases, and the energy waste from those are normal cars, only 34% energy efficient. Normal um, uh, coal, uh, using coal to break, generate electricity. That only uses 34% of the energy in the actual coal itself. So again, the using opposed models to recover the waste energy from that process. From what he said though, it's basically on the exhaust. Like there's a lot of heat loss. I don't I really don't think just like one you can't just like put one spot. Boom, this thing's capturing all the heat right here. Right there. And just like everywhere else that's hot doesn't like connect to it. Unless it truly is somehow able to, like, draw heat in and tr just convert heat around it that's above a certain temperature to useful energy, which there's no way in hell, dude. There's no way in hell there's some device at an exhaust that captures the engine's heat that it's losing radiating sure it goes out the exhaust largely in part but like there's a lot of heat loss otherwise so, and then re so i would say almost guaranteed just because he's like proposing that he's able to capture this heat energy entropy loss in classically like standard internal combustion engine setups it doesn't make any sense from a chemical engineering standpoint. As someone who studied chemical engineering in college, I don't think that makes any fucking sense. But, you know, maybe he yeah, managed to make it useful enough. It's highly unlikely, though. Like, we'll have to see the technology, but I don't think the, like, methodology is... It doesn't matter what the technology is. Like, it's... <clears throat> maybe 
maybe it's just you more useful than nothing. It's possible, but like probably minimally like it's probably not capturing that much more than if you just put something that just captured heat and caused some kind of motion. Check that energy into like a steam engine. Basically, that's uh, the introduction, and that gives you a broad spectrum of uh, where this presentation is going to go, what the commercial implications of it are, and this is uh, uh, section one of 15, and uh, I'll just show you the next section here before I cut away, and we'll go over that in the next presentation. Thank you. Hi right, guys, I'll be back for the next one. Peace out. Thanks for hanging out. See you next time. Uh, actually, I should probably just do a little summary. Uh, in summary, he didn't present any science, like specifics of the scientific aspects. So I don't have any thoughts really because I don't want to like conclude yet until he does those kinds of things unless he like i watch all this and i'm just like it's all like the first one if it's all like this one then it's some bullshit but like obviously it's an introduction video so we'll see what happens all right peace out